On this particular Saturday morning, Norbert was getting ready to go see Mrs. Sophia, but it was a different kind of Saturday morning because there was something called a virus out there and you had to be safe. <laughs> What I learned is sometimes I go chasing around to try to learn or experience God. And if I come out sometimes and just sit and try to do the things he's doing and just say, God, show me what's happening. Speak to me if you'd like to. And it feels like I get closer to God sometimes than by doing everything else. Once again, thank you for being my spiritual guide. A kingdom come, thy will be done, and it may be by doing the very things that Micah talked about. Seeking justice, loving kindness, walking humbly. A kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Could be situations we get in where we see the goodness of someone else and we're lost in praising them without being conscious of it, and that can be heaven. It can be that we're out of ordinary life, seeing people working in their jobs out in nature and we sense something profound and beautiful and perfect is there even in the midst of all the, the complications in those moments perhaps the kingdom has come and god's will is being done as we recognize that and as we heal relationships maybe sometimes even for people that are long gone or people that are still in our life and they have opportunities to to work that through and open our hearts and to reconciled. That's the kingdom coming and God's will. So I think what is the spiritual dimension of family and um, parenting and all that? I think it certainly focuses on the contemplative nature of being close to God, those times of rest and assurance and love that is like resting in our mother's lap. But then it goes on like Mary, uh, Jesus' mother and that early community where it's combining with other people, sharing lives, sharing gifts, sharing troubles. And that those communities stick together in times of uh, sickness and in, sickness and in health, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow. And those communities become powerful families that include but transcend our biological families. And finally, those communities have a call to go out and serve the greater world, the human family, uh, of people we don't know, but we're called to heal or uplift or empower. That's the calling of it, and it can lead to places like hospitals and cornfields and uh, food distributions and parking lots. It's one continuous thread of, of divine presence and guidance, but it's manifested in all these different ways. It's a beautiful story. It's a Mother's Day story. And uh, Kareem wrote this very powerful uh, piece for the LA Times. And at one time, at one point he says, racism in America is like dust in the air. It seems invisible, even if you're choking on it, until you let the sun in. Then you see it's everywhere. As long as we keep shining that light, we have a chance of cleaning it wherever it lands but we have to stay vigilant because it's always still in the air. Well, that's a powerful image because I think we've been in a room uh, and then the sun comes in, we see all the dust floating. And he's saying racism's like that, you know? For much of our time we think, oh, it's not there, it's not in me because I, I don't want to think who I am up here. But then we experience it in different ways, African-American spirit all the time. As, as white people, we, we catch glimpses of it, we see it here and there. Um, but his, his, his plea is that we keep this light on it if we want to know what to do with the pain, if we want to know where to direct the love, we've got to keep the light on it to show us the way. Ecclesiastes says <clears throat> there can be a time um, when uh, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. One thing that's been happening is something called chaos gardens or chaos um, farming. And that is where some farmers take a chunk of their land, like even just a, f a few acres, maybe five or six acres, and instead of having some of those cash crops that are bringing no cash to them now, they're scattering a whole variety of food variety seeds in that little area. In some of them, like a six acre parcel, they'll scatter like 50 different kinds of seeds. 
the seeds aren't random. They're chosen to be food and different kinds of food that complement each other when they're growing next to each other in terms of pest resistance and soil regeneration. And the vision is behind these chaos gardens is that they don't get planted in rows, they get chaotically kind of planted. So when it's time to harvest, people go in to harvest and they discover kind of back to the hunting and gathering days. Because one farmer was saying that he realized he couldn't grow food for himself unless he did something like this. So this chaos garden is feeding his family now in the midst of all this. But he's invited church groups and youth groups and food banks to come in and also participate in this. So it's almost like an old biblical thing of gleaning um, where those that farm take a, a portion for the poor and for the community and for other people. But secondly, as I thought about the passage, I thought about something my father had said to me some years ago. Um, he lived to, to be 91, but uh, in his late 80s, uh, he was here in Santa Barbara and he was pretty disabled. He couldn't do much on his own. He was in a wheelchair all the time. And he was at my house one, one day and I was helping him on a transfer for the wheelchair. And we were really struggling to make it work. And he was a proud, been a proud man all his life. And in the middle of his frustration, he paused and he just said, you know, it's still me in here. Those words, it's still me in here. Stuck with me, made me think a lot. That's the, um, that's the, it's still me in here. No matter what our age, we the outer nature changes, like Paul says. The inner nature gets renewed again and again. It, it's, it can be ever fresh. That's important when we go about life for ourselves. When we get discouraged, when things are happening with our tent or in our life, um, we can take this to heart. We will not lose heart because we'll be reminded that even though our outer nature may be wasting away, our inner nature is capable of being renewed day by day through um, that, that curiosity and that experience of life and in worship and in prayer and meditation, and being in nature. Those kinds of things can keep renewing and reaffirming that that part of us that was there as a little kid is still with us, that's who we are. That's, that's our inner nature that doesn't um, get diminished by all the things that happen to us. I think almost all of you are caring for other people. Uh, your neighbors, your children, your grandchildren, stepchildren, foster children, spouses, parents, grandparents, um, people you work alongside, people in your neighborhood. All of that's God's work. Um, what we do in the church is like, a, um, is like a base camp. And I love the work of the base camp. I love it when we come together and we read scripture and we listen for the wisdom that comes from the gospel and we sing and we pray and we support each other. But I think you'll agree that the work that um, we do as a base camp is just the beginning. And from God's point of view, it's spreading out all over uh, the community and the world. That's glorifying God as much as anything we do within the church. For that, I'm so grateful. We are in the middle of this. <clears throat> we are learning lessons we cannot forget. We, if we do, it's at our own peril. And I think a lot of you agree with me on that. And we just really have to be, as a religious communities, as a country, as a world, become much wiser and humbled by um, what's happening. Um, I think about this in the hymn we're going to sing, um, Be Thou My Vision, uh, Be Thou My Best Thought by Day and by Night. God who called us in to be stewards uh, of the earth. Jesus who said that uh, the rain uh, and the sun that goes on the just and the unjust, the evil and the, and the good alike, um, these things aren't, aren't judgments when they happen, except on us and the consequences of our behavior. So let's seek that wisdom. And um, let's do so by seeking to think about what God, the, the head of the household, of the human household, the human family, would want us to do. Jesus had a lot of teachings about the kingdom of God. And not some place that uh, is, is beyond death. Some place right here, the way he taught all about it. About how we treat our neighbors and our relations and people we don't know. People that are vulnerable. People that are strangers. 
And in the Sermon on the Mount, in this chapter, he says, first, look at those lilies of the field. Look at those birds of the air. And you realize they're not trying to do more than what was designed for them. And they're beautiful. What a simple blessing. And so maybe to those basic food groups of wine and uh, olives and uh, bread, uh, we might want to add ice cream. Um, that's getting pretty extravagant. That's four groups. But I think you're getting the point. <clears throat> Uh, the psalm really encourages us to observe our natural world and, and to appreciate simple things of the basic life that we share with all creatures. And in our modern age, um, we both have a great opportunity to do that with all the knowledge that's out there, but also we need to find opportunities to appreciate it without all the technological um, intermediary action. Just very simple. To be there with wine and bread, to be seeing things out there, to be just quietly, reverentially, enjoying an ice cream sandwich. In the midst of everything else, you know, it's almost like a glimpse of paradise. I want to welcome everybody that's here. Um, and it's all exciting to have lots of folks gathered from all over. And I uh, want to welcome uh, Reverend Jennifer Frazier and her husband there. I see them in the Hollywood Square. And so, good to see you guys. <laughs> And, um, okay, so, welcome everyone. I've got a script and I encourage Scott, Kirk, Tom, anybody, Sandy, if we're going along, I think it's pretty simple and direct, but if anytime we need to, I need to do something a little bit differently, just let me know because we want to do this well. Today is a wedding day in the life of St. Andrews. Thanks to everybody for joining us. This Zoom meeting is being recorded. We have several items of business today, and let us begin with a prayer. So I'll offer a prayer. Well, Lord, you have been with all of us on our journeys. Everybody who's here representing St. Andrews, you've been in their lives, and you've been with them as they journey as part of St. Andrews. And you've been with, with Jen and her family in, in, in her call and her journey. We pray that that spirit, which has led all of us now very much with us this morning as the Congregation comes to us, time of discernment. All this we pray in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, so uh, has this meeting properly been called in accordance with the Book of Order and the bylaws of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church? And do we have a quorum present? That's a question to sue our clerk. Yes, this meeting has been properly called, and yes, we have a quorum. Okay, great. So the purpose of the meeting today, we have two items of business. The first is to vote on the call to elect Reverend Jennifer Frazier to the position of pastor, head of staff. That's the first one. And after that, um, the second one is to approve the terms of call for Reverend Jennifer Frazier. Welcome, Jen. The vote was unanimous. Oh, yay. Yay. Welcome, yay. Welcome, so let us go forth uh, celebrating the... Uh, tangible presence of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the, the guidance given by the Holy Spirit. And all the people say, Amen. 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 Thank you. 